I would like to share with you today how God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this blessed Sabbath. And as I speak, let the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight and flow from your throne of mercy. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and and thank you. Take in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Dwight Moody was an ordinary man who was not interested in religious things. Dwight Moody became a great preacher, one of the most powerful preachers in his generation. He led thousands and thousands of people to Christ. Dwight Moody never had good English. He often made grammatical errors. And somebody says that's inexcusable. One day, Dwight Moody was preaching. An English, te an English teacher came up to him and she said, I took a tally of the number of grammatical errors you made, Mr. Moody. You've made 46 grammatical mistakes. Dwight Moody replied, Lady, I am using all the English I know to win souls for Christ. What are you doing with the English you know? One day, a guy, one day a guy came up to Dwight Moody, who had done PhD in theology, and he said, Mr. Moody, I don't approve your method. And Moody said, Mr. I would rather use imperfect methods I have in Christ to win, to win souls than use the perfect methods you have and win nobody, brother. God, God calls common, ordinary people. I love the way Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You may be very calm, simple, and very ordinary, but God has something for you. God uses the qualified, and qualified than, than they do it for the glory. God does not call the qualifiers, but he, calls the, but he qualifies the ones he calls. Can, can you all turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 to 27? It says, for ye see your, ca your calling, your, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Verse 7, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God calls those of us who are weak, those of us who don't have much wisdom, and God calls common, ordinary people because God becomes our wisdom and Christ becomes our righteousness. God chose and Andrew, who was a common, ordinary man. He was not a preacher, but he led thousands of people to Christ. One of the greatest lines in the entire in the entire Bible was a response to a teenage girl. When the angel Gabriel uh, when the angel Gabriel told Mary that she'd be pregnant and give birth to the Son of God, Mary Mary answered, 
How would that even be possible because she was a virgin and not even yet married? And then the angel responded to her and said, we can find it in Luke chapter 1 verse 37. nothing shall be impossible the question is do you believe that God can do great things impossible things to 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 your life too the Apostle Paul did he prayed in Ephesians chapter we can find what he prayed in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 21 Unto him be the, unto him be the, uh, no, if, uh, in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 to 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding mm, abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Uh, unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout, throughout all ages world without end. Amen. All throughout the scripture we see that as God is doing is God is about doing improbable things for improbable people. So his purposes are achieved and he gets the glory. We most clearly see the evidence of of God working through the lives of Joseph, Moses, David and the Apostle Paul. Yet all too often, it's, it's easy to start thinking. Those people must, in the Bible must be smarter, more holy, greater, and better than me. And can I really expect God to do ever something like that to me? And the answer is yes. When we really begin to look honestly at some of the people in the Bible and take them down off the stained glass windows, it becomes obvious that God did extraordinary things to, or, to such ordinary, regular people, and he still does today. But what of those who dream of making an eternal impact in the kingdom of God, but we don't think we're good enough? The issue isn't that God's power isn't, isn't available to us, or we, aren't, or we aren't smart enough or good enough, this issue is summed up in this verse. We can find it in Second Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. God is looking to birth and fulfill great dreams in ordinary people who are completely committed to him. He's looking for people who believe in him and believe he is willing. Pursuing God's great dreams for our lives begins, begins when we have the courage and faith to say to God, I want to dream a great dream because you're the kind of God who wants that from me. Unless you are actively involved for, for witnessing in Christ, and using the gifts that God has given to you. And if you are locked inside the church, you will soon die spiritually. The Pharisees prayed much in the day, and they were great biblical debaters and good in studying the Bible. But they had no outlet for their faith. Dr. Howard Hendricks of Dallas Sem Seminary is an extraordinary man who has a worldwide impact for Christ. The beautiful thing is, God used an, God used an ordinary, um, ordinary man who obeyed him to reach Dr. Hendricks. Howie was from a broken home, broken home and was raised up by his grandmother in Philadelphia. 
He often wandered from tavern to tavern looking for his alcoholic grandfather. A man named Walt, who taught the Sunday school class, came upon Harry and, and a few other boys and invited them to his Sunday school class. Harry didn't know what Sunday school was, but since it sounded like a school, he wasn't in favor of it. But Walt took an interest in those boys, challenged them to a few games of marbles, beat them at it, and taught them how to play better. Eventually, there were 13 boys out of the streets of Philadelphia attending, attending Walt Sunday School class. Nine were from broken Nine were from broken homes, and four were from five. Four were Roman Catholics. Even though Waltz never went beyond high school, eleven of the thirteen boys went on to vocational Christian services, becoming pastors, missionaries, and seminary professors. God was accomplishing His purpose. By, by using an ordinary man who obeyed him. God uses ordinary people for extraordinary tasks. God uses everyday people for, for ex mm, extraordinary tasks. God uses common folks, poor folks, the plain genes of the word, uh, world, and average folks. The thought that everybody said wasn't going to amount to anything. Yes, God uses them to do stuff that will blow your mind. God wants to use you like that. If you struggle with trials and fears and sins and hassles and family problems, as long as you're growing in obedience, as you qualify as long as you're growing in obedience, as, as God blesses you, commit yourself to be his channel of blessing to others. If you long to be great in God's eyes and make a spiritual impact in his kingdom, my hope is that my hope is that you would believe that God wants to use you. This is my prayer. Amen.